All right, so in part two of projectile motion, we're going to look at an example problem. A golfer hits a golf ball with a speed of 75 meters per second. So there's the golf ball going at 75 meters per second. I've called this V naught for the velocity at t equals zero. And there's its magnitude at an angle of 30 degrees. So here's the angle theta, 30 degrees, because it says with respect to the horizontal. So you have to read that to figure out, are we talking about this angle? We're talking about that angle. Then it says, will the golf ball clear a 20 meter high tree located 50 meters from the ball? So X is 50 meters. And the question is, is Y going to be 20 meters or greater, or is it going to be less? We don't know. We do not know the ball is going to be at 20 meters. We only are asked, is it going to be that large? So. I've drawn my picture here, I've set up my table, and I've wrote my four kinematic equations that I need to do all projectile motion problems. I do this on every problem. Looking at my diagram, I then fill out some things. So initially it's at zero meters in the X, and zero meters in the Y. Later on, I'm going to be at the tree's location, that's 50 meters. I don't know how high the golf ball is, that's what I want to find out. Initially, VX naught. I'm not given VX naught. I'm initially given V naught, 75 meters per second, at an angle of 30 degrees. I know the initial acceleration x, 0 meters per second squared. I know that y is minus g. Now, I don't know the final y location when it gets speed when it gets to the tree. I don't know the x speed when it gets to the tree, except it's equal to VX naught. I need VX naught and VY naught. If I don't have them, I'd have one, two, three, four, five unknowns and four equations. Oh, and I don't know time either, so that's six unknowns. So there's something wrong there. That's too many unknowns for too few equations. I've not located all the information in the problem. If I go back here, let me change my pen, and I look, I see, hey, hold on, I have a triangle here. And that is the y initial component of the velocity. And this is the x initial component of the velocity. And that's the adjacent side of the triangle. And I know the hypotenuse. And I know the angle. So from trig, I know this side. This side is v naught cosine theta. And it's a positive because it's going in the positive x direction. Likewise, this is the opposite side. So I can find that with V naught sine theta. And it's also positive because it's going up. Vx naught is the same as Vx, so this is V naught cos theta. Now let's see, I don't know Y. I don't know Vy. I don't know T. Three unknowns, four equations. In fact, I have more equations than unknowns, so I'm going to be able to solve this in more than one way. Now you're asked to find what is y. That's what they're asking. So if I think about that and I look at my problem, if I try an equation with y and simplify my equations a little bit, let's see, that's zero, that'll simplify that. That's zero, that'll simplify that. This is zero right here. Okay, so it's a little bit of simplification. So here's an equation with y in it. I don't know y. Do I know vy not? No, I do, I do not, but I can find it with V naught sine theta. So yes, I do know it. Do I know T? No. Do I know 1 half? Yes. AY? Yes. Do I know T? No. So I don't know Y. I don't know T. Two unknowns. If I could find T, I could solve the problem. Well, I could find T right here. Do I know X? Yes, 50 meters. Do I know VX naught? Yes. It's V naught cosine theta, and I have V naught, and I have theta. So I could use this equation to solve for t, plug that t into this equation here, and solve for y. I'm going to do that, and I'm not going to plug numbers in for a minute. All right. I understand that I could plug numbers in, and I could get answers, and I could find the time numerically, and I could plug the time in. But I want to show you the way that you need to be working toward becoming better, because eventually, like I said, we're going to want to work in letters. Why? When you make a calculation with numbers, you invariably have round-off error. 
If you make thousands of calculations like you would on a real job as an engineer physicist for Lockheed or wherever, then you have thousands of round off errors, then your designs become worse. And that means that you have to have a better design because of all your errors in rounding than a person in another country who's competing for the same job. In other words, your products won't be as good because you've got these round off errors. Again, another reason for doing it, as I've talked about previously, is because you don't get insights. You don't see what is most important. Sometimes, some of the things that you're calculating don't even need to be measured. And in the real world, measurements or getting numbers will cost you money. Bad news on a test is the teacher might not give you those things that you need to make these in-between calculations. They only give you enough stuff that if you do the algebra, will work out. How can that happen? This could happen, for instance, if something cancels, like the speed of the object cancels out of the problem. So you don't need to know the speed. But you only know how to plug numbers in to get numerical value. So if you don't have these in-between things, for instance, like the speed of the plane, you can't work the problem. So be careful about that. I'll do the problem both ways, but I'm going to do it first, showing you that I can, don't have to have numbers for everything until the very end. I don't even need to find the time in this problem. So, to do this, let me start by rearranging this equation for t. t is the distance the object travels divided by vx0. But I've got a formula for vx0 right there. So it's x over v0, the initial speed, times the cosine of the angle, where the angle is measured with respect to the horizontal. Now I want to take this equation and I want to plug it in for t up here in this equation here. Doing that, y is equal to v y naught, but that's v naught sine theta. So that's v y naught here. And then I'm going to multiply that by t x over v naught cosine theta v naughts will cancel plus one half minus g and then I have t squared well, but that's x over v naught cosine theta squared y is equal sine over cosine is the tangent so I have the tan of theta times x minus g over 2 v naught squared cosine squared theta times x squared. I have all of these things. I have theta of 30 degrees. I can find the tangent. I have x. It's 50 meters. I have g. It's 9.8. I have V0 is 75 and so forth. One of the things that this shows me is that, that the Y versus X, that if you think of Y as your function and X along the horizontal, that it's a parabola. So this is the proof that a projectile follows a parabola. This is X and this is Y. This thing must follow a parabola. Well, this is the term I remind you of parabola generally. Some function of x is ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, let's look at all of that. f of x is my y. a is minus g over 2 v naught squared cosine of theta. So if I was fitting, for instance, experimental data, and I found this A. I could use it to find these things. Also, notice the minus. The minus in a parabola says that it curves downward like a hill. If this was a positive, it would be like a bowl, which means the ball wouldn't come back down. The B, well, that B turns out to be the tan of theta. So by fitting data in y versus x, for instance, in Logger Pro, I could find tan theta if I'm plotting a y versus x graph. I can see what the initial velocity affects. It only affects the x squared term. It doesn't affect the linear term. If this is a very small number, 
you can treat this thing almost as a straight line with a slope of tan theta. You don't get these sort of things when you plug numbers in. And these are the sort of things that in advanced classes that in college and in the workplace, people want you to be able to do. All right, so if you can't do these, then you limit your job opportunities. So practice, don't just plug numbers. Practice the algebra, practice the skill. Be able to derive equations. They will ask you to do these sort of things. All right, now, of course, we've got all these numbers and we can plug them in. And in fact, I did. So I found that y was equal to, I had, of course, the tan of 30 degrees times 50 meters minus 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 2. Notice 9.2, over two, that 4.9, always keeps showing up in these problems. 75 meters per second. We have to square that cosine squared of 30 degrees. Remember the cosine of 30 squared of 3 over 2 and we're square that so that's going to be 3 fourths. You often you don't need a calculator because I can do these if I've actually written a formula rather than doing those in between steps. And the distance here 50 meters which is squared. So 50 over 3, 75 so that's one half and three fourths. You can do a lot of simplification in here. Notice I have meter squared per second uh, squared times a meter squared. That gives me a meter cubed. On the bottom I got a meter squared, so that's just going to leave a meter left over. I have a second squared there. I have a second. I squared that. That cancels that second squared. Trig functions have no units. This whole thing has the units of meters. This has no units. This has the units of meters. Meters minus meters gives units of meters. By the way, plug all those in and punch calculator. And I found that the answer was almost around 26.0 meters, which is greater than 20 meters. Yes. Roy McElroy or whoever hits it, it clears the tree. Now, could I have saved some time and done this problem differently? Well, like I said, you could have plugged numbers in from the very beginning. So we could have said that VX naught was 75 meters per second cosine of 30 degrees. We could have punched that in our calculator and had we done that we'd have got 65 meters per second. V Y naught 75 meters per second. Sine 30 would have been 37.5 meters per second. We could have plugged in the time. The time would have been 50 meters over 65 meters per second. And if we'd done that, we'd have found 0 0.770 seconds. And then we could have found the Y by doing 37.5 meters per second times 0 0.77 seconds plus 1 half minus 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.77 seconds squared. And had you done all of that, you would have got the same answer. But you would not have the understanding that you have by doing algebra. Fine if your whole problem is somebody gives you a number and says, hey, solve it. But that's really not why we're here. We're here to become mathematically literate not only just in the laws of physics, but in applying mathematics to solve problems that we don't know the solution to.